Okay, let's look at some roots of real numbers. Square root of 9 is 3. Do you know why? Because 9 equals 3 squared. So, square root of 9, the same thing as the square root of 3 squared, is 3. The square root, negative the square root of 9. Look at this part first. What is that answer? It's 3. The negative is in front of it, so that answer is negative 3. Square root of 1 over 9. Rewrite it. Square root of 1 over square root of 9. What times what is 1? 1. So square root of 1 is 1. What times what is 9? 3. So square root of 9 is 3. When I say what times what, I need you to use two numbers exactly the same. 1 times 1, square root is 1. 3 times 3, square root is 9. Square root of point zero 0.09. Point 0.3. Remember, when you multiply with decimals, you have to count decimal places. Another way to do that problem would be to write it 9 over 100, and then square root of 9 over square root of 100. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 100. Now I need multiples for 100. I need... Should I use 2 times 50 or 10 times 10? Hope you thought 10 times 10. I need two numbers exactly the same to take something out as a square root. So 3 tenths is the answer, which could be written as 0.3. Square root of negative 9. Not real. You cannot do the square root of a negative number. Square root of negative 25. Not real. Negative square root 25. Oh yes, can do that. Square root of 25 is 5. The negative is outside. So be careful with the not real ones. When you're solving equations that start with something squared, you have to um, solve them by taking the square root of both sides. But when I take the square root of x squared, I get x. When I take the square root of 36, I get 6. I have to put plus or minus 6. The reason being, 6 squared equals 36. Negative 6 squared equals 36. So I have to account for both of those answers. I do that, of course, by taking the square root of both sides. This problem's a little bit different. I have a step first. I need to get the x squared part by itself. Let's subtract 81. Now I get x squared equals negative 81. When I try to do the square root of this time, square root of x squared equals the square root of negative 81, this part, easy. What about here? Not real, so be careful. Even though you, you know the square root of 81, you can't do the square root of 80, negative 81 because there are not two numbers exactly the same that you can multiply to get square root of 81. How about this problem? Let's divide by 7 first. So x squared equals 2. x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. x equals, oh dear, I can't do the square root of 2. Leave it in the radical sign. Now, um, there are some that you can simplify a little bit when they're in a radical sign. So let me do one more example for you here. Suppose I had x squared equals 8. Take the square root of both sides. I get x equals, and you think, well, I, 8 doesn't really have a square root, but I can break 8 up into, how about 4 times 2? So x could equal, without my plus or minus, plus or minus square root of 4 times square root of 2. I can do the square root of 4. So x equals plus or minus 2 root 2. So some radicals can be simplified um, the inside of them a little bit. So make sure you, you do that if the case arises. Okay, I have some more examples of other roots. Um, not just square roots, but the cube root of 8. Anyone know what that is? 
It's two. And it's two because eight can be written as two to the third. So the cube root of two to the third equals two. What's the cube root of negative 27? It's negative three. Hey, remember when we were doing square roots? We couldn't do a square root of a negative? Well, cube roots, you can. Why? Negative three to the third power is negative 27. How cool is that? All right, what about the cube root of 10 to the sixth? One way to think about that, how many tens would I have? Six of them. And every time I have three, I can take a 10 out. So 10 times 10, 100. Cube root of 10 to the sixth is 100. All right, you could also say the cube root of 10 to the sixth is 10 squared, right? 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared, and 10 squared is 100. What's the cube root of 8 to the ninth using the same thing? How about 8 squared? Right? Nope. How about 8 to the third? Which one is it? How do I know? Be careful. All right. A third times A third times A third. Remember you add exponents? A to the, let's do a little think balloon. 3 plus 3 plus 3, A to the 9th. So the cube root of A to the 3rd, of A to the 9th, is A to the 3rd. Be careful on the exponent ones. All right, fourth root of 81. 9, no, no, no. I need something four times. How about 3 to the 4th? So the 3 to the 4th is 81. So what's the fourth root of 3 to the 4th? It's 3. Fifth root of 32. What number can I write to the exponent 5? 2 to the 5th. So the 5th root of 2 to the 5th is 2. 5th root of 32 is 2. 5th root of negative 32. Negative 2. Odd roots can come out negative. Let's test it. Negative 2 to the 5th. What is it? Negative 32. So, the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. Odd roots can be negative. What's the sixth root of 1? 1. What's the sixth root of negative 1? If you didn't say negative 1, not real. Even roots can only be positive. So, be careful. You probably are ready to start your homework. Check the syllabus.